so I'm going to try to start playing wholesome games every Friday. Um, I say try because sometimes I might not feel like playing one, but I'm going to try. Uh, anyone who does creative work for a living knows how tiring it can be and how um, taxing it can be on the brain. Um, I do creative work for a living. Obviously, I stream, which is pretty taxing um, for an introvert like me. And I run D Dungeons & Dragons a lot. I do a lot of interacting with people, which tires me out. So um, I could do with some nice, wholesome fun on a, on a Friday at the end of the week, ready for the weekend. And I thought I'd share wholesome games with you guys um, in case you're in the same boat as I am. Uh, so I'm going to give it a few goes, I guess, to see, well, a few, a few weeks, months maybe, to see how well it goes. I've got a few wholesome games that I can play. Um, obviously wholesome games sometimes come with field trips attached, so, uh, I guess be warned about that. Um, but I'll try and say when I start a game whether or not it has a field trip attached to it. Um, so just so you're aware. Um, if they're too, if they're short and we're done by the time I usually wrap up, I will just probably move on to my time at Porsche because it's still pretty wholesome and chill and relaxing, and it means I can just chat with you guys if anyone wants to talk. Um, that's really it. I'm at 26 out of my 30 follower goal, so that's pretty cool. Um, again, I would like to to reach 50 followers to be considered for the affiliate program so that I can start. So that I can you know, keep building this community of, of really cool, inclusive people who just like to chat and hang out in my tiny little corner of the internet. Um, I think that's it. So the game, as you can see, is a book of beasts and buddies. Unsurprisingly, there is no Twitch directory for it. So I just found the most relevant one. Um, I'll be starting momentarily, so if you want to go away and get hydrated, Get something warm if you're cold. Um, please, by all means, do that. Uh, I have remembered this time to take a screenshot for the YouTube thumbnail, so that's good. Um, this is, I think, sort of like a collection of cho mini choose your own adventure games um, to make friends, buddies with loads of beasts. So I guess we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah. So let's get this started. Dedicated to Bud, Lily, and Blossom. Pause the preview. Uh, Dad taught me the ways of the wilderness. Mom made sure I always had snacks, and Blossom found friends wherever she went. When they could no longer travel to visit their favorite places and friends, I devised a way to bring creatures and places to them. I guess I'll unlock something, maybe, if I complete the game. Question, question, question. Thacko? What? Okay. Hey, Scoot. Scoot's near. Feed. You show the Scoot some snacks from your pack. It simply smiles back and continues to Scoot about. Uh, high five. You raise your hand for a high five, but the Scoot has no hands or arms. Four fingers. Really, I should have... I don't know what I expected. You poke the Scoot. It is very sticky. You have some super sticky Scoot's boot on your finger. You realize that you've stepped in Scoot's boot, which hampers your movement. However, the Scoot isn't chasing you, so your slow retreat is successful. Interesting. So I assume it'll have the same... Yes, so... Maybe I go back and do all this stuff later? A wild Gubbins appears. Sure. Gubbins doesn't seem interested in any snacks, but he gives you a hug anyhow. The Gubbins gives you a high five. There isn't anything dangerous to hide from, and there isn't any Gubbins to hide from either. The Gubbins is gone. You observe your surroundings. There is no sign of any Gubbins in the vicinity. You leave out some snacks and wait for the Gubbins to come back. You leave to look for Gubbins. Stealth, plus 112. Wow. A stony worm pokes its head out of the hole in the ground. You didn't think to bring 
didn't think to bring any inorganic snacks that such a creature might find appetizing, but the worm appears to have unearthed the sapphire that it happily ingests. Perhaps because it has no arms, or possibly because its twin gemstone's eyes are actually in at eye spots, the worm does not wave back. You contemplate casting stone to flesh on the earthen worm. You imagine it will become a flesh worm craving your flesh. The worm's stony skin feels like living earth. The worm excretes a dusty toot. You bravely run away. Okay, so I guess you can discover everything about them. Uh, gem worms are reclusive silicon based creatures that inhabit the deepest recesses of the earth, where they forage for rare minerals to consume. They are blind and perceive through taste, scent, and sound. Gem worms excrete a dusty powder and communicate via flatulence in a combination of scent and sound. Oh, what? Nope. So maybe you have to do things in the right order to unlock the full entry. Makes sense. Time seems to cease as you become lost in geometry so banal that you begin to forget your own existence. I high five it. Your hand remains raised for reasons you cannot recall, for even the potential excitement has departed from your mind. Is it worth poking? Is anything worth poking? You are overcome with existential ennui and fall unconscious. Eldritch Boar. Sunday D6 slash 1D20. It has no mouth or any discernible feature worth noting. You should have fallen unconscious. Oh, so that's everything. Level 5 vegan. Uh, the Eldritch Boar is an incomprehensible madness, and to perceive it is but the interpretation of a forgotten thought. Describing primordial ennui is engaging in infinite hyperbole. How many of these are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Oh, and I guess an advert for... Oh, you can replay the game. Cool. Okay, so, let's try getting more information on the scoop. So if I poke it, and I feed it. Hmm. Okay. Keep going, I guess. A bearded cactus balances before you. You consider high-fiving the cactus, but would rather not make a pincushion of your palm. Let's just admire this music for a moment. Your singing seems out of place. As you consider poking the cactus, you realize that poking is a part of its very being. In this moment, you share a deeper understanding of the cactus. Feel a sense of misunderstanding and regret as you retreat. Sagacious succulent. Water, sunlight, carbon dioxide. So I poke it to get the moment of deeper understanding. Then high five. Nope. And there's nothing else I can interact with. There's only the four. What about... Poke the scoot. Does it carry over? Not that I can tell. Oh. Get it on my finger. It's not going to protect my hand though, is it? That next one said breath weapon. Yeah, okay. Come back to that one. As a gubbins, a colossal garden dragon floats before you. You climb onto the dragon's back to explore further. You relax and have a snack upon the dragon's tranquil back. You don't have any tools sufficient for gardening. You explore the garden and wonder what secrets it might yield if you could only understand the dragon. You run barefoot across the dragon's lush back. The grass feels pleasant beneath your feet as you flee. Breath open pollen, garden bro. God. That's a great joke. Garden Variety Dragon. Drag Garden. Suddenly Sasquatch. 
You start to sketch the Sasquatch. She strikes a pose. How will you portray her eyes? How will you portray her nose? How will you portray her mouth? How will you portray her hands? <laughs> bear or bear? How will you portray her fur? How will you portray her feet? You have revealed your masterpiece in the Sasquatch Coos. Yes! You give your artwork to the Yasquatch. She hooks you. She's powerful strong. You offer Yasquatch a cup of coffee. She shares some cake. You wonder where she had been keeping that cake. You work your magic, detangli detangling her tresses and providing a much needed silent treatment. Though you're missing a certain je ne sais, je ne sais quoi. Yasquatch blows you a kiss and gives you some muffins to go. I see. Excellent. A large lizard races around you. You wave goodbye as the lizard races off. The briskalisk. I like it. Uh, feed. The lizard is long gone before you can retrieve anything from your pack. And I assume... Balls off before you can mount it. Yeah, so I can't do anything with the lizard yet. Speedy legs. A noxious cloud lingers in the air. You land a mighty blow. You realize something solid was at the center of the cloud before you collapse. I didn't actually mean to click that. Whoops. I will wave. You attempt to wave the cloud away with your hand, but it is ineffective. You now have a stinky hand. Oh, I've everything with the gem worm. Hmm. So I wonder if the only thing that carries on between the um between the, the creatures is the item. Alright, let's keep going and see what else there is. I guess defend the last one. Before the cloud draws too close to you, inhale deeply, hold your breath. Oh, god. Uh, you can't hold your breath any longer. As you expel the air from your lungs, you blow away the cloud to reveal a strange mushroom creature who appears to be casting a spell. You wave your hands, mirroring the mushroom's movements, and you accidentally counter its cloud kill. You continue to wave your hands, but are unable to counter rave decay. You fall unconscious. Sporcera, Fungus Arcanus. All the names. Magic Mushroom. I'll be honest, this is um, a lot more in-depth than I was expecting from the... Uh, the trailer. A nightmarish apparition looms over you. GTFO! A flaming dragon of darkness emerges from the wraith's hand. Despite your desire to stay, your, fleet, your feet flee against your weak will. A gung-ho ghost. Enthusiasmus spiritus. You hold up a magic symbol that you found on the back page of the book. The wraith tears it and the book to tatters, trapping you in eternal darkness. You awaken later from a cold nightmare. Fear still lingering from Psy Nightmare Omega. I love all the role-playing references. I assume I can't do anything about this yet. You cast a dash of salt. The Wraith casts Meteor. You concede and depart. And then the last one, GTFO. You try to flee from the Wraith's 100 Crackle Fright, but you are already dreadfully scared. Dreadfully scared. Okay, so that's all of them. So I've got some muffins. Does the gubbins want muffins? You should go get gubbins. So, okay. The gubbins is with the dragon. You got gubbins. The gubbins give you a fanny pack surprise. Inside you find more fanny packs for all your friends. 
Glance down at your small snack pack and then watch as the dragon inhales a hill and washes it down with the river. You poke at the dragon's living body of earth and plant and ponder its existence. And that's onto its back. Don't have any tools. Can't understand the dragon just yet. You're on barefoot, etc, etc. Oh, I've learned everything about the dragon, but I don't have its item. And then that's the Scoot's boot. So I've got... Uh, I still need something to interact with. Gubbins! Uh... Gubbins doesn't seem interested in any snacks, but his eyes widen at the sight of the muffin. He eagerly eats the muffin and gives you a hug. Gives you a high five. Okay. Gubbins is a tiny fae that loves to play hide and seek, give gifts and lend a hand. They are known for their unparalleled ability to hide even while being observed. Aww. Oh, does the Asquatch want... Suddenly, Sasquatch. You attempt your best Sasquatch call, but it comes off as a cat call. The Sasquatch glares and stomps off in a hoof. Uh, what was it? Sketch. I'm oh, still missing something. So I wonder if I can get a different pun. Uh, so, lonely eyes, wavy nose, sweet smile, bare hands, silky fur, big foot. Yeah. It's beef jerky, but she has beef with your sketch and thinks you're a jerk. An eclipse worth of shade has been cast my way. Sasquatch looks at you like, who taught you to draw? You contemplate going to art school and fret about your crippling debt. Okay, so that's the right thing to draw. Despite the... Although it did unlock this. Despite merits flaws. Big fur. Social. Anxiety. Fabulous. Sasquatch. Yasquatch. Despite their fabulous naturalist lifestyle, Sasquatch are often misunderstood and maligned. Please don't be prejudiced against Sasquatch. Clothing is uncomfortable and their fabulousness just comes naturally. And I've got a little, little heart. I doubt... I can do anything with that just yet. Can I counter it's the Ray of Decay? So it was defend, defend, wave, you pop the mushroom on the head, it lets out a little poot. The little poot is debilitating, you fall unconscious. And that's not it. Uh, so, defend. Defend. Wave. Defend. Diving behind a log, you narrowly avoid the mushroom's ray of decay. The log crumbles. You extend an offering, but the mushroom keeps its distance. It doesn't seem to like the smell of you or your snacks. Mushroom cowers as you wave your hands. You deduce it is out of magic. With no means of protecting yourself against the sorcerer's powerful onslaught of spells, you curl upon the ground. The mushroom bops you on the head. It hurts a little. So clearly I don't have anything to give it just yet. As you flee, you see the mushroom is also fleeing. Stinking clouds, tornado, ray of decay, cloud kill. Uh, I doubt it needs the bag, but... Yep. I don't have any tools. Deeper understanding. It's just the same thing. Okay. So I can't do anything extra there. Does the Eldritch Boar want to um, accessorize? For 
unconscious and forgotten phrase is a lingering shadow of consciousness. A stick collides with your palm, as if it were a branch from Yggdrasil your mind blooms with thought. It appears to be a mundane stick, but you can't help but wonder why it is in space. Your hand remains raised for reasons you cannot recall, etc, etc. Underwhelmed into consciousness. Yggdrasil twig, aha! Is that for the dragon or for the Yasquatch? Go with the dragon. I got gubbins. You flee from the Garden of Fear of Potential Allegiance. Castle Garden Dragon flows before you. Uh, so if I, if I explore it... Okay, maybe not. Merrily perily, my head is on fire. Hmm. Maybe it's for the Sporcerer, actually. Uh, defend, defend, wave, defend. Don't think it's any of these. Nope. I doubt that. I doubt it's that I've got to trip the lizard up, but I guess I'll give it a go. You wave your stick about, but before you can think of a spell, the bris briskalisk is gone. Aha! Aha! These are all the same still. Don't think the stick is for the worm. Yeah. Stick is not for the worm. Which is not something I ever thought I'd say, but there we go. There we go. Just want to check something. That's fine. Uh, the stick gets stuck. You lost your stick. The scoot extends the noose covered branches and appendage for the stickiest high five you have ever experienced. The spoot covered twig sticks to your hand. So now I have a scoot stick covered in scoot's boot. Scoots are a gelatinous species known for their superb adaptability. Obliviousness and stickiness are the most common traits of their kind. While most scoots are docile, they are very difficult to domesticate. So now I have a sticky stick. Uh, everything from the Eldritch. Uh, the Eldritch boar is an incomprehensible madness and to perceive, perceive it is but the interpretation of a forgotten thought. Describing primordial ennui is engaging in infinite hyperbole. If we've already read that. I don't think... I don't think it's the cactus, dude. Bearded cactus, sorry. Yeah. Uh, everything from the Yasquatch. You wave your sticky stick, scattering Scoot's boot everywhere. Your hands are still sticky from the Scoot's Boots Blatter. With an adhesive advantage, you mount the lizard as he races through his daily duties. You give the lizard the back rub. Gives you a thumbs up. Your outstretched hands wave in the wind rushing by. You discover that the Basilisk... Briskalisk eats only the fastest of foods from his well-worn snack pack. You offer it a new pack. Having experienced a lap in the life of a Briskalisk, the lizard drops you off where you got on and leaves you with a whistle for future trips. Nice. The missile whistle. Uh, environment any diet accelerate, speed amame, rush rooms, top speed, warp speed eight, and other name the marathon add on. 
Briscalisks live their life on the run. Baby Briscalisks learn to run before they walk. Because they never learn to walk. It is rumoured that Briscalisks are able to enter the 8th dimension. Now I've got the magic whistle. That's a spell reference. I'm assuming it's one of these two. Let's go with this one. Defend. Defend. Wave. Defend. Okay, maybe not. What else could need the magic whistle? No tools still. I don't understand the dragon. Don't think it's for the worm. Doesn't really make sense for it to be for the worm. Yeah. Not for the worm. Not that, not that. Interesting. Aha! A flaming dragon of darkness emerges from the wraith's hand. Your feet wish to flee, but your spoot-covered boots keep you in the battle, and your spoot-covered clothes protect you from the flames. The poltergeist births D4 terrifying shadows. You channel your positive energy to make more friends. You distribute D4 fa fanny packs. You attempt to cast a mighty spell, but your concentration is broken by countless tiny furry feet crawling across the nape of your neck and down your spine. Third D4 fanny packs. Phantom shadow swells and spreads beneath you. Black tentacles that grow up and scra scrabble about your body, preventing you from dancing. So it's the fanny packs. High five. There's some ghosts who may like high fives. Just the thought of a high five and fear it's the phantom. It sprouts flaming spectral hands. You flee from the phantoms. Okay, so I, it's not that. It's either the dragon or the sorcerer. Or the cactus. Or the gem worm. I think these are not really going to change, yeah. Okay, so. Defend. Defend. Wave. Defend. Uh, mushroom approaches cautiously, but appears to be put at ease by your stinky hand. Aha! It trades your pungent potion for a selection of your smelliest snacks. Bops you on the head. As you flee, you see the mushroom is also fleeing. There we go. So I've got a stinky potion. Diet, deer and skunk cabbage. Stinking cloud, spawnadio, rave, decay, cloud kill, magic mushroom. Sporcerers class stinking cloud before battle begins to obfuscate their presence. If their shroud of fog is dispersed, they will readily retaliate with rave, decay, cloud kill, or spawnado. Uh, I'm going to... This one, maybe? A stony worm pokes its head out of a hole in the ground. You imbibe a sip of your magic potion, the worm swallows a stone. But well, I still need to give it something. Stone slug, chert worm, true neutral. Gem worms are reclusive, silicon based creatures that inhabit the deepest recesses of the. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I need something still for that. Yeah, I just, I don't have, I don't have everything I need for that right now. Uh, I, maybe I just have to go back to the Briskalisk. Um... Or not. 
or not. Hmm. Embrace the cactus of silent stoicism. Your understanding of the cactus grows. As you practice the unspoken art of the cactus, you realize a high five is not with your hand, but with your heart. You embrace the cactus of silent stoicism. Your heart. Deeper understanding. You go knowing that your bond persists beyond distance and he gives you his fazan to commemorate your training. It's the hat, right? I don't know. Ishin Denshin Fazan? Oh, it's the. It's a hair comb, I think. Bearded cacti are highly intelligent plants who are, can, often be, can often be found meditating in the desert. Despite their tendency for solitude, or perhaps because of it, bearded cacti are often experts in the art of Ishin Denshin. No. I apologize for butchering that word. But I think that might be what I need for the dragon. Uh. As you explore, you sense that the dragon is directing you to its exceptionally overgrown mane of tall grass. You explore the ground behind the beneath the tall grass, discover a sword. You recognize the sword from a catalogue of swords and sundries. It is Kusanagi no Surugi, the grass cutting sword, a Ryuwazamono. Again, I apologize, I don't speak Japanese. You use the grass cutting sword to trim the dragon's grassy mane. The sword, Draco, Hills, Rivers, Pond, Garden Variety, Drag Garden, Garden Dragons, Living, Just Alt of Earth and Stat Plants. These colossal but gentle beasts are most often found flying through rainstorms to water their verdant backyards. But I still don't have anything to feed a worm with. Uh, what was it? Nope. It was a. Uh, was it attack? Defend. Must be defend. Dragon of Dark. You've, uh, spook covered boots keep you in battle. Your spook covered clothes protect you from the flames. And then channel for the D4 fanny packs. Uh, countless tiny furry feet scroll across the nape of your neck and down your spine, but you imbibe a sip of your stinky potion and fumigate yourself, banishing the phantasmal caterpillar. Creature seems to believe that burying your teeth is a threat. Your smile has escalated the situation. In desperation, the spirit casts sweets. You suddenly want to eat sweets and withdraw a muffin from your snack pack and share with the ghost. You, the ghost, and the briskalist go on it for a jog together. The ghost finds a new passion for fitness and gives you a key in gratitude. Spooky key. Wraithful wraith, furious phantom, perturbed poltergeist, grumpy ghost, sad spirit. But I've got to do that again for the... Um, the description. You spit some sick jazz licks. The spirit fears the jazz. Grow stronger. You are really sure on the procedure, but the ghost goes away anyhow. Gung ho ghosts aren't necessarily malevolent, but sometimes trying your best is very hard and they lose perspective. When facing a gung ho ghost, bring, be, bring plenty of exercise and be ready to exercise. Supplies and be ready to exercise, sorry. So the only one I haven't got completely is the worm. You release an example explosion. The worm retorts with the plot. You collect some sparkly dust. I never really noticed that that became reply. Sparkle dust. Uh, gem worms are reclusive silicon based creatures that inhabit the deepest recesses of the earth where they forage for rare minerals to consume. Yeah, I've read all that. My buddies have a present for me. Oh yeah. Well, 
I believe that is everything. In this game. That was... So that was a book of beasts and buddies. It was extremely wholesome. I hope that you all enjoyed. Um, I am going to swap over to... Oh, I'm going to close the game. I'm going to move over to my time at Porsche now. Um, I really, really enjoyed that. Um, so, YouTube... Uh, thank you for you know for watching. Um, I'm going to to swap over to my time at Porsche now. So if you want to uh, follow my exploits in that, go to the relevant playlist, click on the relevant video. Um, Twitch uh, will just be a moment.